Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Wu Ruiguo. In this segment, we will continue our conversation with Dr. Lin Wenchen, who is the president of the Taiwan Foundation for Democracy. Wenchen, I understand that you have been a professor of political science and mainland studies at the National Zhongshan University for many years. How do you then, both as professor and also the president of the foundation, you know, look at the changes, however much or however little, that has happened in China since Chinese economic development that happened in the last two decades? Well, uh, I think we should must be honest. Yes. You know, China has been changing a great deal. So yes. In the past three decades, you know, I, I think that's by comparison. Mm -hmm. You compare China now, uh, 30, 30, years, years, uh, 30, or 30 years. years ago, yes. you know, that's a totally different China. Of course. You know. Uh, before the 1978, you know, uh, that country, it, this economy was on the verge of collapse. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people lose hope in their own countries, quite poor. Mm -hmm. But now China is uh, an economic, you know, superpowers. Mm -hmm. you know? No doubt. So, no, no doubt about that, you know, we, we must, you know, uh, confirm or we must, uh, must uh, you know, give China the credit mm -hmm. for economic changes. And I always believe that uh, in the long run, so China would become a democratic country. So, uh, following, you know, the economic success, mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, for the time being, Taiwan, China is still not a democratic country. But no. yeah, I think it takes time. So, mm -hmm. um, so maybe so it's, uh, two decades or three decades, uh, the difference, I don't think, you know, put hope on the first generation leadership no. under, you know, with Fu Xintao as a core, mm -hmm. because uh, the first generation leadership went through, you know, one after another political movement, yes. you know, so um, they, they believe that uh, democracy might, you know, bring the uh, chaos, mm -hmm. they have that kind of perceptions, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe the fifth generation is still, uh, mm -hmm. not, not they, China is still not ready yet, you know, when the, the fifth generation comes to power so, uh, in 2012. So mm -hmm. Maybe we need to wait for two or three generations. After when, that. Yeah, when the, the, the new leaders, um, you know, who are not, you know, afraid of democracy, mm -hmm. who understand uh, what is uh, in do your democracy, then mm. we can have hope, you know, but it takes time. So. Okay. And uh, how about the human rights situation in China? I know this is a very, you mm -hmm. know, uh, watched and also very sensitive topic yeah. around the world. Mm. But you and I both been studying democracy for many, many years. Mm. We understand that democracy doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe there is, you know, there are some signs of emerging pluralism in China, mm -hmm. you know, different views on the same, you know, public policy issue. But as far as, you know, democracy, like you said, you know, it's far from, you know, a full-fledged democracy in China today. But how about, you know, human rights? How about religious freedom? Especially <laughs> with reference to Falun Gong. Mm -hmm. You know, that is something, that, of course, a lot of people pay attention to around the world. Well, China's uh, human rights condition continue to upset a lot of observers. Mm. Of course, I'm the one who is uh, a little bit disappointed with uh, China's uh, human rights conditions. Mm. Uh, in some areas, of course, you can say that uh, you know, China's uh, human rights uh, situation improved. For example, you know, uh, to respect you know, uh, women's rights, mm. you know, or you know, to you know, more serious uh, review death penalty, mm -hmm. you know, they okay. have some progress. Okay. But on the other areas, uh, for example, you know, uh, religious, uh, freedom of religious, you know, or especially for Falun Gong's case, mm -hmm. you know, there is no progress, no. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008, uh, when uh, uh, Beijing hosted the Olympic Olympics. Games, yes. uh, international communities, um, you know, uh, had, you know, uh, great expectations, uh, uh, thinking that China can improve uh, is uh, you know human rights because uh, China hosted mm -hmm. the Beijing Olympic game because mm -hmm. in 2001 you know when China tried to win you know uh, the bid yeah, to, the to host the you know, games. Olympic yes. games, the government promised that China would improve mm -hmm. its human rights conditions, mm -hmm. but. It did not. No. Uh, it did not. Mm -hmm. It sacrificed a lot of you know people's human rights, including the farmers, including those who lose the, lost their lands. Mm -hmm. You know because China would like to build you know, you know arenas for 
uh, the Olympic Games, uh, and uh, Beijing would like to guarantee or make sure that uh, you know the Olympic Games is uh, successful. Yes. So you know uh, it uh, uh, cross more than 1,000 websites and control you know the freedom of you know expression. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is you know mm -hmm. indication that China is long ways away from being mm -hmm. a democracy. However, having said that. We understand as you know, uh, students of you know, democratic studies that the, the, once you achieve impressive economic growth, mm -hmm. once the population gets educated, mm -hmm. you know, once the quality of life is improving, mm -hmm. then the conditions seems to be ready yeah. for democracy mm -hmm. to take place. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of the you know, things that I've identified that have already happened mm -hmm. in China the impressive economic growth, uh, the quality of life improving, and also the education level. Even though it is still the world's largest mm -hmm. country with the most you know, illiterate people. Mm -hmm. However, the education in general, especially in the metropolitan area, yeah. has really improved. Mm -hmm. So given these conditions, uh, apparently uh, some of them are already there in mainland China. What do you think that are the major you know, obstacles to China becoming more open, more democratic, and more institutionalized. Well, I think also, of course, you know, the main problem or the factors is uh, that the uh, communist regime yes. continue to resist or refuse democratic changes mm -hmm. in the countries. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are other kind of issues. So, for example, the gap between the rich and the poor yes. actually is, uh, is widening. Widening, and yeah. also between the coastal area yes, and the yes. inland area. Yes, yes. yes. so the countryside, uh, there's still a lot of problems. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the China continue to emphasize that uh, it practice democracy on the basic levels, mm -hmm. on the lowest levels, uh, on the village levels. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of problems in the elections. Mm -hmm. you know. um, it, the problems, uh, you, know, you can find it in Taiwan, you can find it in China, and even worse. You know, because uh, in the countryside, uh, people are quite poor, so they are willing to share their votes yes. in order to, to vote buying. Is yeah, very vote rapid. buying is, yes. uh, is and uh, maybe you know the gangster or the breaker society control mm -hmm. the process of uh, of elections, mm -hmm. and the government, the Chinese communist regime, of course, try to control to manipulate mm -hmm. the elections. So it's still too early, so, and. and uh, uh, as you say, the metropolitan area, mm -hmm. Shanghai, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Kandong, Beijing, uh, yes. Beijing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they are ready, you know, because it's, uh, it's a metro metropolitan area, so, and uh, people's uh, knowledge is about democracy, uh, their you know, living standards uh, is much, much higher. Much higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and we all know that the, you know, democracy in China may be a ways away, but uh, you also mentioned that uh, when Beijing held the Olympic Games last year, a lot, of, you know, a lot of people, including myself, mm -hmm. expected that uh, <laughs> maybe with the international event, sporting event, such as the but Olympic were you Games, disappointed? well, a little bit <laughs> in the sense that mm. you know, I mean, how much the government, you know, uh, went out of its way to try mm. to oppress and limit and control the freedom of expression and the you know, freedom of speech. But the fact of the matter remains is, if we look at cross-strait relations. You know, especially since President Ma Ying-jeou came mm -hmm. to power last year, yeah. is the fact that, that we have certainly expanded mm -hmm. our contact across the Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. There are more people going to China, yes. and also more people uh, from China coming into Taiwan, mm -hmm. now maybe as tourists, but maybe in the future as business you know, investors yes, yes. or executives. Yeah. So uh, with the increased contact mm -hmm. and more integration mm -hmm. between China and Taiwan in the future, do you think that there is potentially a role for Taiwan to play and also for the foundation to play mm -hmm. in terms of helping to bring changes you know, towards democracy in China? Well, first of all, of course, our, our foundations would like to you know, play a part mm -hmm. in the you know, democratizing you know, China. So, mm -hmm. so uh, our board of trustee meetings uh, did reach uh, uh, resolutions or conclusions uh, asking us uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to have more exchanges with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the organizational academic communities in mainland China. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, tell you, you know, uh, the, uh, maybe it's not secret, you know, mm -hmm. how does the, the Chinese government, you know, 
you know, defines or identify the Taiwan Foundation for Democracy. They call us an, an illegal organization outside of China. <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the activities that you would like to do are being forbidden. You yeah. cannot do. But without any contact, you cannot really make, make a big change. So, mm, okay. so we would like to reach out. You know, mm -hmm. we would like to talk with their scholars, uh, you know, or, uh, or their, uh, the so-called non-governmental organizations. Yes, you the know, NGOs. There, there, there is no really NGOs in mm -hmm. mainland China, but we would like to work with them. So. Mm -hmm. And I think Taiwan you know, actually can play you know, a part in uh, changing China. For example, we have uh, uh, so many you know, Taiwanese living in China. Yes. I continue to tell our businessmen, you should treat your workers, you know, um, we well enough, you know, good enough, you know. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, it created a benign images of, of Taiwan. Yes. If you are quite brutal, yes. you are quite mean to your, your workers, then, you know, you, you don't expect, you know. Of course, that's going to backfire. Your workers, yes. you know, would, you know, would think that Taiwan is a good country. So yeah. Taiwanese would be a good people. So, mm. you know, so uh, our the businessmen can make a change. So. Yeah, can play and, a role. Uh, yeah. In uh, the early 1990s, uh, President Lee Teng Hui did have that kind of strategy. Mm. That is what we call the peaceful evolution. Yes. But you know, it did not come true. But uh -huh. now President Ma has yeah. the opportunity. Yes. Because China, you know, is willing to you know uh, have exchanges or, or cooperations with uh, uh, President Ma's yeah. administration. Mm. So we can you know, change China by contacting the yeah. society and the people in China. Okay. Good. Well, on that very promising note, we're going to take a short, you know, a short break. We'll be right back to the Taiwan Outlook, and we will continue this conversation with Dr. Ling Wenchen. We'll be back in two minutes.